uh, 75, and then I typically say and, <laughs> uh, and it's going to be, uh, I'm sorry, x is going to be greater than or equal to 75 and less than or uh, equal to 80. I tend to do it that way. That might not be the best way to write, but that's the way I kind of think of it usually. So, so uh, if you wanted to put, so, so there's, now I could put, make this into a dynamic thing. Again, I can go into it and say, this is going to be equal to quotes around this, quotes after this bit. And then that 75, I'm going to say, and to tie it to the 75, I'm going to replace the 75 with this 75. And then that and is actually something I want as a text field. So this gets a little bit weird because now I have to say, okay, and this is going to be tied to with an and, and then that and I want as text. So I have to put a quote around the and, and then I'm going to go all the way from the and to the equal, end quote. And then I need an and, this is not a text and, but one that's going to tie together the 80. And I'm going to replace the 80 with this cell. And then I have to tie that together with another and. And then the text at the end is going to be quotes around this last bit and enter. So that's, so now I've got this dynamic thing where I can change the 75 to 60 if I wanted. And it changes basically automatically down here. Put it back to 75. Now, if I wanted to do this, then of course, using the cumulative uh, ability, I can I can take this all the way up to the 80, as we did here, which would be represented by uh, the the orange, and then subtract out everything up to the 75. So I'm going to say, all right, that means I have to do. I could I could do it this way. I could say this is going to be equal to. Uh, uh, I had I had. Uh, let me, let me, well, hold on. I got confused there for a second. This equals norm.dist. So I'm going to pick the larger one, which is going to be this 80 and then comma, the mean up top is 74.292 uh, again, comma. So I just hit comma so you can see it down here. And now I'm on the standard deviation. That's going to be the 1009 again, and then comma. And then cumulative, we do want it to be cumulative, therefore one or true, closing up the brackets. And then I have to subtract out everything up to the lower point, which will give us the middle stuff. So norm.dist again, the X now is going to be the 75 comma, the mean once again is 7492 comma, scrolling down just so you can see the argument. So now we're on the standard deviation, scrolling up 10 09 and then comma this also cumulative true or one close up the brackets and percentify home tab number group percentify adding some decimals and we get to the 1895 so notice that you have to be careful with uh the equal signs uh whether it be greater than or equal to now you might say well if i look at this i can say if i go to 75 Here's the likelihood they get a 75 up to 80. Uh, what did I say? 80. I can add those up. I get to 18.7. Remember, that's not exactly the same here because it's the area under the curve. So it's going to be like calculus and whatnot. So it's a little bit different. So this will just be uh, that. Let's just put the same thing here. We could do the same thing with Z's. So I could take the lower Z and then the upper Z and do it with the Z scores, the upper Z. So now I'm just gonna convert these two to Z scores. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to brackets 75 minus the mean, which is uh, 7492, close up the brackets, divided by the standard deviation, which is 10.09. Decimalizing home tab font group decimalize, and so there's our uh, Z, and then I can do it here. This is going to be equal to brackets. We're going to pick up the 80 minus scrolling up. We'll pick up the 74, closing up the brackets, and then dividing by. That's not a divide. Dividing by 
and we'll pick up the uh, standard deviation and then enter decimalize home tab font group decimalize and so remember that the closer to zero that means it's you know in the next to the mean close to the mean right so now i can do my i can do my same kind of uh of calculation with the z score so this is going to be once again this this will be equal to uh norm dot s dot dist and now we're going to take uh, the Z, I'm going to take the one related to the higher point, which is the upper Z. So this is going to be this one, comma, it needs to be cumulative, therefore one, close up the brackets, minus norm dot dist, no, I'm sorry, dot S dot dist tab, the lower Z, comma, and then it needs to be cumulative, therefore one or true, and close it up percentify home tab number percentify brackets and we once again get to this one now this this is a little bit harder to represent with just our one graph over here so obviously i can see that upper limit of uh the 80 and then you can use the same one to visualize the lower by simply changing this to the lower is 75 right so i can change this down to 75 and I can kind of go back and forth in my graph and say, okay, it was between this line and then where it was before, which was the 80, like when I went up to 80 over here. So it would be nice if you can make a graph that shows both of those, which we'll do in future examples. But you can use this one graph to get some visualization of, of all of that uh, together. Uh, now, let's play with our graph over here a little bit and see if we can make it a little bit more a little bit more fancy you might think it's impossible that's fancy as fancy can be already but no uh we'll add maybe a z score to it which will totally up the fanciness a lot so notice down here we've got our our uh amount our, our test score amounts and the middle point is over here. We've got this line. We might also want to be representing another X with our Z scores so that we can also see this graph in relation to our Z scores. Let's make this one a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to say, so, so I'm going to add that to my graph. I want to add another X down here so I can use either X uh, and, and refer it to the Z score or to the